All right, welcome. This is the second part of conservation of energy. Uh, in the last one, we looked at how we're going to approach these problems. And in this video, we're going to start looking at some sample problems. So in this example, we have a toy car and it's being pushed against a spring and then it's being launched. It's gonna go down the track around the loop to loop and come back up. And our problem reads a 0.1 kilogram toy car is propelled by a compressed spring as shown above. The car follows a track that rises 18 centimeters above the starting point. The spring is compressed four centimeters and has a force constant of 250 Newton meters. So before I go too far, notice here I've got Newton meters, but this is in centimeters and that's in centimeters. I'm gonna have unit mismatch. So I'm gonna change this to 0.18 meters and I'm gonna change this to 0.04, whoops, meters, not centimeters, meters. Let me just cross that off. Bit meter, there we go. Assuming work done by friction to be negligible, find A, how fast the car is going before it starts up the slope, and B, how fast the car is going at the top of the slope. Now, in any conservation of energy problem, you have to know what friction is doing because if friction was not negligible, we would have to take that into account. But here it is, we can ignore it. So, uh, now we need to set our zero point. Well, considering we don't want to deal with any of this, and if we're talking about gravitational at the end here, it's going to make a lot of sense to have this be the zero point. So we're going to set our zero, not to be the ground, but to be the um, launch point of the car. So it might have been better to put it back here. So A says, how fast is the car going before it starts up the slope? And B says, how fast the car is going at the top of the slope? So now I need to do my energy inventory. So in both of these cases, I am starting here at the compressed spring. So I'm going to have elastic potential energy, UE. Um, my gravitational is going to be zero and I'm not moving and I can ignore work. So then um, part A is talking about what's going on here and part B is talking about what's going on here. So let's start with part A. How fast is the car going before it starts up the slope? Well, if I can ignore friction, all of my elastic potential energy over here at the spring is going to get converted to kinetic energy uh, as I go. Uh, so I have not increased my elevation and I haven't lost anything to friction. So I could say after my energy analysis for part A, that UE is going to equal KE. When I bust that out, that's going to be one half kx squared equals one half mv squared. I have k, I have x, I have m, so I can solve for v. If you want to pause the video and uh, run the calculations, um, go ahead. I'm just going to write them out now. It's going to be one half times 250 times 0.04 squared is one half times 0.1 v squared and when you solve for v you get two meters per second <clears throat> then for part b they want to know what is the speed going to be at the top of the slope well let's go back to our energy analysis again our starting is going to be the same but this time up here we're still moving there's no indication that we've stopped so we're going to have both kinetic and gravitational potential so now i'm going to have ke plus UG. So uh, again, if you wanna bust this out and do the algebra, go ahead and pause the video here and then you can catch up on the flip side. This is gonna be the one half, 250.04 squared is going to be equal to one half times 0.1 VF squared plus 0.1 times 9.81 times 0.18 and when you solve for your velocity, you're going to get 0.68 meters per second. So what are our takeaways here? First of all, you got to know what friction is doing, because if I had had friction, I would have had to have put work not conserved on both of these. Um, and then the second thing is that, you know, look how great this is. Look at what an easy solution this was, you know, given this complex motion pattern, we could just cut out all of the uh, middle. Okay, so pause the video here. Um, I had to reread the problem because uh, what I missed was this um, 
this diagram, they're saying that this was the path of the car, but they're saying that it would have been the same uh, if it had taken the alternate path. Um, they have to be a little bit careful because that can be confusing because of the way that we defined our zero. So it, it yeah, um, I'm not really crazy about that. And I didn't quite catch that when I used this as a sample problem, but um, we're just gonna like assume, you know, that we've got this path. So, and it's still scalar, so it, very, it simplifies. Okay, I'm gonna um, readjust. I'm gonna look at the next problem. So we have starting, Starting from rest, a child zooms down a frictionless slide from an initial height of three meters. What is her speed at the bottom of the slide? Assume she has a mass of 26 kilograms. Uh, diagrams are good. It's always good to do a diagram. So we have slide and we've got the child and starting at the top and this is going to be her final. I will usually put my start and my final. And we know that the height of the slide is three meters. And again, we have to do that friction check. What's going on? Well, it's frictionless. It's going to make sense to set this as our zero point. We don't have to worry so much about our system here. That's really going to come into play in some problems. And if it's an AP problem, they almost always define the system for you. Okay, so if we're ignoring friction, when she starts off, she's going to have some gravitational potential. And when she ends, that's going to be all kinetic. So we can say that mass times gravity times height equals one half mv squared. Look what mass does. For a lot of these problems, we don't really have to have mass. And you'll notice uh, they give us a mass here, but do we have to have it? No, not necessarily. So it's gonna be on both sides, it's gonna cancel out. So I'm gonna take my uh, 9.81 times the height of my slide, and that's gonna be equal to one half VF squared. And when I solve for VF, I get 7.7 .7 meters per second. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video again to change sheets. I apologize if you don't have my handout packets. These are really difficult to read because I had to do a copy and had to do a small font because it was a copy. And now that I'm putting it on video, uh, it's even more blurry. So I will go ahead and read the problem. Um, the surface of an incline is coated with an experimental substance that is intended to reduce the frictional force between a block and the surface of the incline. A two kilogram block is placed at the top of the incline at a height of 1.8 meters as shown in the figure. After the block is released from rest, the block slides down the incline and a motion detector at the bottom of the incline measures the block's speed at 5.8 meters per second after the block is no longer on the incline. So that means immediately after it left the incline. Which of the following claims is correct about the experimental substance? A, the experimental substance reduced all the frictional force because all the gravitational potential energy of the earth block system at the top of the incline was converted into the kinetic energy of the block at the bottom of the incline. B, the experimental substance did not reduce all the frictional forces because some of the gravitational potential energy of the earth block system at the top of the incline was converted into non-mechanical energy. C, the effectiveness of the experimental substance cannot be determined because the speed of the block at the bottom of the incline as measured by the motion detector indicates the block has more energy at this location than the earth block system had at the top of the incline. D, the effectiveness of, effectiveness of the experimental substance cannot be determined without knowing the magnitude of the frictional force between the block and the incline for and after the experimental substance was applied to the incline. So what I'm basically asking in this is, um, and, and it says, which of the claims is correct? So we have to know if energy was conserved. They're giving us an awful lot of um, values for this problem. So to me, that indicates that we're gonna be doing some kind of a calculation. So we have two options here. We could say that uh, if the, um, if, if the uh, gravitational potential energy is converted into non-mechanical energy through friction. So scenario one is that UG equals KE final. 
And if this is the case, then we can say that energy is conserved and there's no friction. And so given that we've got all of these values, I think we can probably go ahead and calculate that. So what I see is I have, this is gonna be MGH equals one half MV squared. And this should equal that. Well, I've got a height of 1.8. Forget these calculations. Now, mass is on both sides, so I'm just going to cross that off and ignore it. So this is going to give me 9.81 times 1.8. And on this side, I have 17.66 joules. On the other side, one half V final squared, it's going to be one half, it says it's 5.8 squared. And that's going to be 16.82. These two numbers are not the same. And so that tells me that energy was not conserved in the sense that it didn't stay inside the mechanical bubble. We lost energy in friction to heat and to probably some sound maybe. So right away, I could see that B is gonna be the correct answer here. Um, once, you, once you do this and the answer, this on this one, the answer becomes pretty apparent. Okay, we're gonna do the last two on a separate video and I'm going to include uh, power on that video. So we're gonna kind of toss power in at the end. I want to at least mention it. You don't really have all that much practice with power, but uh, so stick around for part three.